fear-mongering is the, is the way our government's been operating. They've been playing that card too many times, now they're looking at cybersecurity as the next fear. Um, and then they'll find something else later on. It's the point is, uh, and they never really want to solve the problem. That's been the basic issue with it, because once you solve the problem, you don't have the problem to, uh, to, to, get the, to have justification to get more money. So uh, that my, uh, my, uh, my version of their vision statement uh, came out like this, that uh, for them, it's uh, keep the problem going so the money keeps flowing. I mean, otherwise, if you solve the problem, you don't have that problem to uh, justify more money and more of an empire and to sustain your empire. So, so that's, that's, that's really the, what they're operating. Originally, I thought it was, you know, uh, aim low and miss was their vision statement, you know, because everything they ever did, they failed at. Uh, little, I didn't quite understand it till uh, uh, the latter part of my career that they were really not solving the problem because they didn't want to. It was a matter of keeping it going so they can get the next contract or get the next set of uh, budget from, from the Congress and so on. Keep it going. Well, you have to look at it also uh, in order to do the bulk acquisition of data. The, the largest amount of data be, is being passed around inside the United States, this is around the world. I mean, the pockets are uh, where information is uh, really ballooning are in the United States, in Europe, and in Japan, and, and in uh, uh, Korea, South Korea, and so on, those are the big areas. Um, in fact, 80% of the fiber optic network uh, for transporting the communications of the world really is within the United States or passing through the United States. Uh, so that uh, this is really what they call the hometown advantage of uh, being able to have the, uh, being able to monitor the communications, for example, of South Americans. Uh, because the South American cables uh, run from South America to Miami and then back down to South America. That's not by chance, by the way. <laughs> that gives us a look into everything that's going down there, on down there, and they can then capture all that information from uh, places inside the United States that don't have to be overseas to do it. That's true for about 80% of it, but uh, the other 20% uh, is where they have to... That's really the target they should be looking at, really not the internal United States, but uh, they decided that uh, with bulk acquisition of data, U.S. citizens were first. We were the first ones collected that way. So the rest of the world is no more than a, uh, being treated simply just like all the rest of us, all of us U.S. citizens. So we're all being treated the same. Uh, again, it falls back to the principles of totalitarianism and how uh, dictators and so on have operated down through the centuries. I mean. It's know, know what your people are doing and find the ones who are uh, not conforming to what you want them to do and then get rid of them. And that's fundamentally, uh, that's fundamentally what this process does. It gives them that kind of knowledge about everyone in the country. Uh, and, and if you start to speak up about some issue or something, you get noticed and then they have all that data already assembled on you and they simply go compile it and look at it and see uh, see how they could influence you to do what they would conceive to be the right thing. So that's how you use it against people and you, and you make sure that they know that you know about what they've got. Um, and so then, so then they, uh, they fear you uh, one way or the other or uh, will conform to your wishes. Even if you, they, even if you have, if, you are not, if they can't find anything on you specifically, but they can find something on someone you care about, then they'll use that against you. You would actually be what, what the founders of this country envisioned as what it should be. That is a country where people have the freedom to be creative and innovative without being, without having the fear of being observed or, uh, or disapproved of even before they can try to, try to institute or start to imp implement an idea that they had. So th th that's how civilization advances. When you take away that freedom to, to feel like you can do anything here, that it, every, the sky is the limit here, you aren't bounded by anything, uh, then you take that away. Why? Uh, people withdraw like they did in East Germany or in the Soviet Union. They become very, um, very withdrawn, afraid to do anything because their next door neighbor or some other person would be spying on them and reporting them. And so uh, they, be, they stagnate as a civilization, they become drunkards and uh, like they did in the Soviet Union, a lot of alcoholics in the Soviet Union because they were frustrated. They couldn't feel that they had the freedom to, to be creative and innovative. And that just destroys uh, human, human aspirations, basically. 
One of the main problems I see is that uh, this uh, way of uh, doing bulk acquisition of information on the population is spreading through the democracies of the world. It's not a question of uh, uh, just creating it here in the U.S. I mean, we are spreading this around the world. I mean, the Five Eyes are using it uh, and it's spreading to some other countries. Uh, there are other cooperative efforts with uh, third parties under a program called Rampart A where they're starting to do the same kind of thing. Um, and this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, uh, knowledge and information about the population is being used by law enforcement through the MLAT mutual law enforcement uh, ag agreements and treaties, uh, uh, and it's being used worldwide. So the people cooperating, other law enforcement agencies around the world that cooperate with the FBI or the DEA, uh, they will get information from the NSA uh, indirectly and never be told it's coming from that, but they can act on that and then when they do, they have to do their own, they have to create their own, what they call parallel construction to, uh, to uh, create information that's admissible in a court. Since the NSA data wasn't collected with a warrant, it can't be admitted in court, so, uh, or it's inadmissible. So they have to do a parallel construction, then, which means go find the kind of implicating information that would give uh, probable cause to do what you're doing, arresting them and uh, do it through normal pr policing procedures, then we'll use that data in court, substitute for the NSA data, so they perjure themselves there in court. And I call that uh, a planned program perjury policy run by the Department of Justice of the United States. Uh, and now they're spreading it around the world, so they're subverting our judicial system inside this country also, and they're not just doing it here, they're spreading it around the world. So. Well, you know, we all need to be concerned about this around the world, not just here in the United States. We may have started it, but uh, off the model of the Soviet Union and the Stasi, I might add, and uh, but we're spreading it, and that's even more criminal in my mind. Help by spreading this message. Share with your friends, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Turn on notifications to stay updated.